Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 18 of the F124 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Singapore Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on the video that went live later on last week uh, from Baku, I would highly recommend going back uh, and checking it out. We found out what happens if you try and go side by side into the castle section uh, and it doesn't end well. Um, but yeah, today though we return here to Singapore, obviously the flyer season uh, has now begun. Just six rounds to go of this opening campaign and Max Verstappen, his gap at the top of the table has been cut down to 73 points there. Red Bull's gap as well uh, down to just 71 at the moment. So it is all still to play for between Ferrari and Red Bull at the top of the table. Leclerc will be hoping he can try and use the momentum uh, that he's built up recently to try and outscore the Dutchman again. Verstappen hasn't scored points in the last two Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc has won both of them. So yeah, a lot of momentum behind him as we head into the Singapore weekend. Uh, we've also had some quite big news. Kevin Magnussen has finally decided that he's going to hang up his boots uh, here in Formula 1. So we're going to see a new driver over at Haas next season, uh, which I'm very, very excited to see how that is going to shape up the driver market. Get yourself subscribed if you're new around here as well. We're trying to hit 5,000 subs on the channel at the moment. But yeah, let's head out then here onto the circuit. It's hot, it's humid, it's one of the most physical and mental challenges of them all. It's Singapore. Welcome to free practice. Well, Singapore then in our driver career mode actually ended up being one of the most exciting and dramatic races of season one. Uh, so let's hope we can have a similar kind of race today here in the My Team universe as well. Um, just quickly, a little bit of housekeeping. Coming up, get ready to open it. Distance is on your MFT. Uh, this is actually the final race I'm doing on the old patch of F1, so be before 1.3, I believe, which is meant to fix, like, the DRS trains and things like that. Uh, to be completely honest, I was meant to be recording this on the new patch, uh, but, but it actually releases later on today, and, well, I've got to get on with videos as well, because I'm heading out uh, to the Spa 24 this weekend, so got to get out as many videos as I possibly can, ready to go for whilst I'm away as well there but of course yeah just want to say a massive thank you to everyone uh, for the continued support obviously this channel isn't quite featuring the daily uploads uh, like we see on the main channel uh, obviously we've got co-op and the williams rtg and things like that so you know this series isn't quite daily uh, and obviously i normally take grand prix weekends off uh so yeah thank you all obviously for sticking by and subscribing if you're enjoying the stuff we do well mini ramble over then as we round our way through the final couple of corners not my greatest track sim run we only get the green. I know I've said this as well before, but I really do like the new version of the Singapore Grand Prix circuit. It is such a welcome change to a venue that I always used to loathe uh, on the F1 game. You know, it was just one of those races that couldn't really deliver much drama or anything like that. Um, but yeah, nowadays is actually one that I really look forward to, uh, especially inside F1 24. So hopefully we can try and, you know, keep that kind of joy <laughs> as we come back to the Grand Prix this weekend. Um, but yeah, need to get more purples. Making our way then in towards the final couple of corners. See, we're just about getting up towards the purple score. The Delta, though, does look pretty good so far this weekend. So I think we've got some decent pace. There we go. That's nice. Let's head into qualifying. It is one of our great cinematic settings of the season. Welcome to Singapore. We're under the floodlights with the walls close and pole position up for grabs. Well, come on then. The sun has set here in Singapore. But honestly, yeah, when you get a lap hooked up around here, it is one of the most fun on the F1 calendar. Like I said, I'm hoping uh, with the new patch that they're going to fix the AI using overtake mode in qualifying because... Push down to P17. Uh, laps, yeah, definitely don't feel quite on the limit as I feel like they should uh, inside this game. They do when I'm heading right towards the outside wall <laughs> very, very early on in the lap as we make our way up the Raffles Boulevard. There we've got yellow flags out. One of the McLarens is locked up. Uh, so just trying to make sure the AI don't believe I'm still on full attack. Uh, but yeah, Lando Norris there. Big mistake on his first run. While well, Awasa, yeah, delivered one of his best results of the season last time out in Baku. You know, was able to avoid the carnage and pick up a few cars towards the end of the afternoon. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari goes top of the board. Is pretty much flat through the final corner. We're going to do a 29-2. Only good enough for P20. 
And now everybody on their final runs. It is all four of the orange cars at the rear of the field. Oscar Piastri not getting a lap hooked up. And obviously we saw what Lando Norris did on his. Weirdly, he still decided to finish it for some reason. Um, which certainly strikes me as a little bit odd. But yeah, we need to find a good, you know, nearly a second if we want to try and be more competitive uh, with some of the other bigger runners. P20. Wish Mark would stop telling me that whilst we're on our qualifying lap. As so I just see there getting a slightly better run out of the Raffles Boulevard. Oscar Piastri bumps his way up the order. Uh, Fernando Alonso goes to the top of the timings as well then. Surprise. We haven't seen him announce his Formula 1 retirement. But clearly, Whoa, I believe he's got a bit longer left in him. That was a terrible line there. Got to gather it up though. Try and find back the time as best as we can. Three tenths up as we make our way towards the top of the circuit as we are now down to last place here. Chuck the car over what used to be the Singapore sling. You can use that curbing in qualifying. The grip's there over one lap. But yeah, still, this lap time is slowly going in the right direction. But certainly not as much as I felt like we could have done. We could be up to about a second up on my previous delta here as we really try and fling the car through this final sector. Seven tenths up now. As we make our way in towards the final few corners. There's not much time to find here. But we've got to try and do everything we possibly can. They're attack the curbs. Oh, the back end really wants to rotate round on me. Over the curbing again. Their final corner completely flat. Flick it in. Oh, we just like keep it between the white lines. Three quarters of a second up. Only good enough for P18 though. Well, I believe that might be the first ever all Spanish front row lockout we've seen in Formula 1. Someone correct me uh, down in the comments below there. Verstappen lines up P3 though ahead of his big title rival uh, in Charles Leclerc. Hulkenberg a very good effort in P11. Uh, but yeah, we end up P18. Better than we did in Baku. Uh, but I gotta hope that we've got a bit more race pace in the car. It's the Singapore Grand Prix where Sebastian Vettel has the most wins here with five. Who will be lifting the trophy today here at the Marina Bay Circuit? One of the interesting things about this circuit was the fact that we went under the grandstand. Well, not at the moment. The track layout has been reduced to three miles. Turn 16 and 19 are lost for the moment. We now have a straight there. Time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Hamilton, Russell, Norris, Gasly, Hülkenberg, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Ricardo, Stroll, Albon, Mr. Monaco, Perez, Joe, Sergeant, Elwasa, and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. If we don't want to be stuck near the back for most of the race, you're going to need to push early on. Good luck. Well, here we are then, trackside then, ready for the Singapore Grand Prix. And it doesn't look like weather's going to affect things tonight. Meant to just be overcast uh, throughout the entirety of the evening here. Of course, we all know uh, just how long a pit stop takes around this circuit. So a one-stop strategy is absolutely the way we're going to try and go this afternoon there. But lining up then, P17 on the grid. Sergio Perez with some penalties. It's five red lights. It's going to be lights out, and away we go there. Stroll gets off to a decent start. It's Kevin Magnussen. Stroll to put the power down. Look at that, though. Whoa, yeah, hello. Into turn one. Everybody just trying to move around. I get a bit of a contact from the rear. As there goes a Yuma Oasa. He must have had a lightning getaway there, right around my outside at the first couple of corners. Don't want to do a Sergio Perez uh, and Esteban Ocon off the start there. And yeah, Oasa absolutely flying from 21st place on the grid, making up good ground. At the start of the race, you can see he's now going to try and go on the attack here on against Sergio Perez. He is going to look down the inside of Sergio Perez. This is the Ayumo Asa we want to see in this series. They're not afraid to get his elbows out. And luckily for me, he trips over the Mexican. So I'm going to say thank you very much. Stay alert for threats around you. Oh, Checo, they're just trying to sneakily poke the nose back at the inside. Unable to make it happen, though, as Sainz has uh, taken the lead then. Off the start, so Alonso must have dropped backwards. Charles Leclerc 
I think he's up to P2 as well, so that's really, really good for his title hopes. As around the outside of Alex Album will go. Not really sure how we did that one, uh, to be completely honest, but I'm into P16 then off the start. So we have gained one place then on this opener. So yeah, this track is really one uh, that is more about the driver, I feel, than the car still, despite the fact now there are quite a few long straights around this venue as we make our way down in towards the final turns. Will it be Sykes or will it be Charles Leclerc? Could we see Ferrari team orders later on? It is Charles Leclerc! So he must have had a lightning getaway from fourth place. Well, let's ride on board then with Charles Leclerc ready for the start of this one. Lines up P3 by virtue of Alonso's grip penalties. And you can see it's going to be lights out and away we go. And just a better hookup than both sites there. He's too busy worried defending from Max Verstappen. And you can see immediately around the outside through the first corner there. Sykes again is just going to be able to try and pinch him on the apex. But Charles Leclerc, as they head out of the first couple of turns, he's going to be down the inside as they make their way out onto the Raffles Boulevard. Carlos Sainz, though, able to hang on to that lead off the start of the race. There is tucking up into the slipstream. He goes to the inside. He'll have a look of his teammate. He just then finds the room around the outside there, sends it to the outside of Carlos Sainz. And Charles Leclerc from third on the grid. That is a critical move to the leader this Grand Prix. Well, although this track's lap now obviously is much, much shorter in terms of time, this circuit, yeah, is still very much a marathon, not a sprint. It's still one of the longest races uh, on the F1 calendar, so we're really just trying to settle into a rhythm nice and early on. This car actually sits very nicely over the curbs through that middle sector there. Never really have felt as confident as I can as, you know, kind of take those curbs over the Anderson Bridge. Um, but yeah, we're just watching the back of Kevin Magnussen here, of course. All focus really now uh, is on Season 2. Uh, we're starting to hear some rumours and rumblings about rule changes that could be coming in. Um, so we're kind of just settling in and just trying to pick up points where we can towards the end of the year. Yeah, all eyes on next season. Uh, and obviously that means that generally the pace of the car just starting to struggle again against some of our big rivals. Well, the pace Fernando Alonso had in qualifying doesn't seem to be correlating into any decent race pace. Oh, we've got yellows. Oh, I think that's... Is that an Alpine? Is it, is it no one at all? There were definitely yellows out temporarily. Uh, someone got, no one's got issues. I don't know what that was about. Um, but yeah, like I was trying to say, Alonso definitely seems to be struggling a lot more now. He's under pressure from Yuki Tsunoda, who's actually been a bit of a missile around this circuit in recent years, uh, but has been very unlucky... Uh, in Grand Prix. Sometimes I don't really know why I bother saying anything on this game. Alonso must have heard my comment and has suddenly decided he fancies catching back up uh, with the front runners. then. So that's now left Sonoda at the head of this train. I'm getting a little bit worried. Sergio Perez behind me seems to have finally worked out what he's meant to do uh, behind the wheel of a Formula 1 car again this evening. Um, but yeah, we need to try and make an impact. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they're definitely starting to battle more. I think the LP now has got the jump on Sonoda, so it might have actually been Yuki uh, that was holding Fernando up. I just might have looked at completely the wrong time. But we got v carbs we got McLarens, Aston Martins, Hasses, 2-2 two two Motorsport cars, Red Bull even, are uh, locked in this train there. So, oh, we nudged the wall again. Clearly taking some liberties with that this afternoon. Uh, so, oh, there we go. Everyone, Constantine is up. We'll go around the outside of Magnussen. It's a little bit weird there, because the AI kind of pinch themselves. But that Haas has got so much straight line speed, though. Will that be inside for the next corner? I think Kevin actually wanted to turn in on me, but we've completed another move. Oh, and now we've got yellows immediately. That's that Stroll, who looks to be out of the Grand Prix. Who's going to park it in the way of Daniel Ricciardo? Got to get past him. Thank you. And there we go, another freebie for us. And... Back up to racing speed, come on. It's a heartbreaking end to the evening quite early for Lance Stroll. So he didn't even get to start the race last year. But as we make our way back through turn one, two and three, Ricardo now, he's got no DRS off of his fellow Australian in front. So hopefully he's going to be a sitting duck So we make our way down the Raffles Boulevard. But I really did think we were kind of settling in then for this race. And now suddenly we might be able to complete three moves in the space of a lap as we're going to get the run on Danny Rick to the outside. A little bit later on the brakes. Oh, we actually locked the rear slightly, but we hang on to it. And around the outside, we'll go. Big moment, big moment as we try and make our way out into the Raffles Boulevard. Daniel Ricciardo 
He's going to say thank you very much. So he's going to switch to the inside. We're not going to back out of it though. Oh, <laughs> that was aggressive. That there was no contact made, and I think we took Ricardo by surprise. Maybe the kind of move he would have done a few years gone by. Well, as we cross one third distance then this afternoon, really our pace at the moment uh, is battling against the Alpine at the front of that next little group. Uh, and ultimately, yeah, with Ricardo hanging on to the back of me, you know, Magnussen and Perez as well waiting in the wings. Be careful, we think you're going to start losing some tyre grip any time now. We are really, really struggling to match them. In fact, we're actually losing time most laps here. As you can see, Ricardo. He's wanted to put a lot of pressure on me from behind. Um, but yeah, these tyres are starting to hit the cliff. I'm tempted to try and box early, like sort of the end of lap 13. As you can see, Ricardo, he's, he's getting really impatient. He wants to get a run on me anywhere he can. I'll just box pick confirming then to the team. We're really trying to make sure we take everything out of the tyres on this final lap. And we've actually taken Ricardo a little bit by surprise there. Just trying to build up a bit more of a gap there, making sure that he knows he can't make a move. But, yeah, I mean, we're needing a lot. We need a four-second undercut up to the likes of Piastri and Sonoda. It's not that, like, I think we've got the pace for points, to be honest, but I'd love to be in that fight. I think I'm more worried about is whether Ricardo's going to do something relentless against me later on in the afternoon. As so, I oh, just see that. Don't know why I went for the uh, shifter. Maybe I was trying to do a handbrake turn. Uh, on the exit of the Anderson Bridge. But, yeah, we've been able to keep that gap now to Piastri at around the four-second mark over the last couple of laps. But, like I said, we've really been trying to take everything out of the tyre um, that's left on it. I'm wondering, actually, what Sonoda's pace would be like uh, if he wasn't in the slipstream of that Alpine car. But, yeah, we are going to be the first one into the pit lane then. So, a little bit of an aggressive call here. Often I like to go long... Uh, but that's definitely not going to be the case today. 37 miles an hour exactly on pit lane entry. You can let me do that another 100 times and I would never quite get it nailed again. But as we make our way down though towards our pit box, of course we're going to come out in clear traffic. Uh, I'm intrigued to see how the gaps are going to kind of spread out with the new ERS balancing. Perfect job on the turn in there mate. Looks like a nice stop time. We're happy with that one. And luckily, yeah, we don't get a safety car immediately whilst we're in the pits. Only problem I have got is, yeah, i got next to no battery to really try and push on this outlap. Uh, but, yeah, 12 seconds to Bottas, so let's manage that gap. And, of course, yeah, the opening lap will certainly be able to have the biggest advantage over the AI. Two seconds out of Bottas immediately. Car ahead by 9.7 seconds. Let's keep trying to work that. Um, but yeah, we could really try and springboard our way back to the points here, which I would be very impressed with. I, I had no expectation of pace here this weekend, despite how much I do enjoy this circuit. Oh, I just don't hit the wall on the outside there. Well, there we go. Loads of cars now peeling into the pit lane then. So everybody else getting to pretty much half distance then this afternoon. It wasn't even that the tyres were badly worn. I just think I slightly overheated the surface of the tyre. Uh, and that's what we were really, really struggling with. So, obviously, we've also opened up so our Watts has got free reign to pit whenever he feels like in this Grand Prix, uh, which he's going to try and stay out just that little bit longer. Nuts the wall in towards the final corner. is not exactly what I wanted to do. But we'll stay ahead of Magnussen then. There is Yuki Tsunoda. Oh, we're going to still be out behind Yuki, but not by much. If we can just get inside that range, I'd be happy. Is it Esteban Ocon? I believe that is slowing him down. But Sonoda might now have lost the DRS. Oh, again. We've got to stop slapping walls. Everybody else now into the pit lane. So Oscar Piastri is going to be the driver that we want to try and get the jump on. In fact, we might be side by side with him. Or through turn two and turn three there. The Australian does a very good job positioning his car in exactly the right spot. I mean, surely he's going to have the place. Uh, sorry, the pace even over Yuki Tsunoda over the next couple of laps. But, you know, I think Ocon is just breaking free now of this group as side-by-side -side will go with the Australian. Oh, he doesn't quite have the confidence on his fresh tyres. They take about half a lap to kind of warm up, but we're through. But I think Oscar and I, they really need to try and work with each other at this stage of the day. I think he's got the pace to try and get us up to Yuki uh, at the moment. So he's going to have a look down the inside, but not quite commit enough. I was hoping we could try and slipstream each other to get to him. Um, but that might not be the case. Oh, oh, we got yellows out. 
One of the mooks has gone for a spin. I would take your safety car now. That would be pretty nicely timed. So who is that? Is that Hamilton? Is it Russell? It's George Russell. We've got a red flag. The Delta positive. And let's have you straight into the pit lane, please. Okay, there's been an incident on track resulting in loose debris. Fortunately, the marsh... Well, that seems like a very, very odd call for a red flag, to be honest. There's only one car that's gone for a spin. Russell, I don't think he even had any front wing damage or anything. So he was just kind of parked in the middle of the road there. And I think the FIA kind of panicked. Um, but that's certainly going to make things interesting then for the second half. To change our strategy for the rest of the Grand Prix if we want to. Well, I had no idea that rain was on the horizon after the Grand Prix. But suddenly... Things are going to get very, very interesting here. The soft tyres don't work that well uh, around this venue, but could we see a switch to wet tyres before the end? Somehow Russell's still ahead of me. It's five red lights again, though. And it's going to be lights out, and away we go. Is Hulkenberg? Was he up in P8? I never spotted that. So Nico Hulkenberg clearly doing very well as we got a rogue Magnuson. Apparently, he's just going to cut turn one and claim the place. I'm not having that sunshine. Back down the inside, we'll go at turn three. Away with it. Oh, come on, Kevin. you got to back out of that. I saw the line you took down at turn one there. Is Gasly trying to fight it out with Lando Norris a bit further up the road. Max Verstappen is back to the front of the Grand Prix then. So, I think everyone's a little bit frantic to try and make moves here off of the restart. This time around, Magnussen down the inside. And this time around, again, we'll hook it up there as Russell... Going to be caught a little bit napping for some reason. Alonso is out on hearts. Yeah, I hope. Oh, what is Alonso doing? Oh, down the inside will go there. Is he, I think, got a little bit pinched. Trying to make sure he gave Yuki the room on the outside. And then trying to send it on me. Going to absolutely send it deep into the next corner there. That got a little bit sketchy off of the restart. But, yeah, if I was going to trust anyone there, it would probably be Formula 1's most experienced driver. Just over 10 minutes time. Rain in 10 minutes. Oh, that really doesn't bode well. And we know it's going to really start falling as down the inside of Sonoda will go. Try and pick up the place there on the exit of the corner as we'll power down. I really wish this straight was a DRS zone. I'm not really sure why it isn't, uh, to be completely honest. But still side by side with the Japanese driver. We'll make it through. Remember to P9 then. So points now suddenly not only look impossible, but looking... Really, really on for it, uh, but we have got no battery. Well, I have told the team then to prepare uh, intermediate tyres for if we need them towards the end of the afternoon. Singapore is a really, really difficult track, of course. It's so many corners, so it's not really one that you want to gamble. Some slight damage, but nothing too serious at the moment. Just be careful. Yeah, I'm not really too worried about it. I certainly can't feel a difference in the car at this stage of the day. Um, but yeah, I'm prepared to make the switch to Inters even if the AI don't. Even if it's just a couple of laps remaining because the Delta here can be massive as our top two in the championship, Leclerc and Verstappen. Hunting each other down for the lead of the Grand Prix. We've got yellows out. Is that Charles Leclerc? I think that's Carlos Sainz then that's gone for a little bit of a mistake at the top of the hill. So no idea what's happened to the Ferrari. I guess he's just locked up. And it ran deep into the corner. But yeah, to be honest, over the last couple of... Um, not too... I must have accidentally clicked my rewind button there. But yeah, in the last couple of laps, though, we've really just been trying to kind of settle into our rhythm, trying to make sure that we convert this res result to a couple of points. I've also obviously had one eye on the sky. Are we going to see any rain before the end of the afternoon? As again, I try and go for the handbrake for some reason. Uh, come on, focus, focus, focus. We've got six laps to go. Things are really heating up. Oh, here we go. We've got Lando Norris and Pierre Gasly fighting it out for the... Not for the lead, sorry. They've each won one Grand Prix, but they're certainly not fighting for the lead here. That's going to be really interesting. You can see immediately how much it backs everybody else up. Might see some rain. ETA, about 15 minutes. Okay, so don't think we need to worry about the rain between now and the end. That's one less thing to factor in. And if we take a look on the minimap, then Charles Leclerc has made a move for the lead of the Grand Prix. But Max Verstappen is instantly going to come back in him there. Straight back through he'll go. As once again, Gasly trying to put pressure under Lewis, uh, under sorry Lando Norris. There's so much going on towards the end of this race. I can't help but feel that there is still going to be one big twist today. But I'm hoping it isn't a knife an hour back. Well, three laps to go then. Once again, Charles Leclerc has made the move. 
And he's back into the lead of the Grand Prix, but we've seen time and time again that Red Bull is just so much quicker than anything else in a straight line. He's going to power back to the inside of Leclerc down the end of the Raffles Boulevard. I mean, this might just be whoever's in second place heading into the final lap has the shot at glory, but we are still just tucked in in P8 at the moment. I would happily bring home four points. I believe at the moment Alpine are the only team with both cars inside the top ten, so... Yeah, the French team, they're seemingly starting to pick up their performances at the moment. I think it's only, yes, Sauber. That Sauber, it must obviously be one other as well. Sauber and Williams um, that haven't got a car inside the top ten here as we start the last lap of the okay, Singapore Grand Prix. Keep your concentration and let's bring it home. Will we see Verstappen convert for the first time since Zanvor, or will we see Charles Leclerc make it three Grand Prix victory in a row? He is absolutely hounding the Red Bull as they make their way onto the Raffles Boulevard one final time. Hamilton is just watching on, waiting to see if an opportunity open up to him. But Leclerc, he hasn't got enough. Max Verstappen able to pull away from him down that back straight. So my only guess is that Leclerc's used too much battery and it hasn't got enough in the tank on this final lap there. Looks like Hulkenberg as well is having a battery manager ahead of me. I really hope this gets fixed uh, in the new patch as well where the AI seem to save a load of battery on the final lap there, because you can see how much pressure now we're able to put Hulkenberg under. Of course, my teammate uh, in the driver career mode, but there is certainly no such affiliation in this series as we'll try and get the switch off the Anderson Bridge. I'm just starting to think that the tyres haven't quite got enough towards the end of this race, but down in towards the final couple of corners, just when we started to think Charles Leclerc might be able to challenge Max Verstappen for a world championship this season. Verstappen is going to bring a hammer blow here at Marina Bay through the final corners. The Red Bull driver is going to be back on top once again inside this series. For us, though, from 18th place on the grid, we are going to come through for P8. It is another four points for the team. I am happy. It's never easy to make it across the finish line here in Singapore, but they've done so with some style here today to take a remarkable victory. Another great victory to add to the list. Cool, calm and consistent does it. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they've secured here. Verstappen a six-point swing back in the Dutchman's favour and a well-needed six-point swing at that there. Beat St. Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton there. Lando Norris, Pierre Gasly, five drivers from five different teams uh, in the top five come the end of the afternoon, but 17th on the grid to eighth for us. We're happy with Alpine scored, Haas scored, we scored, v Carb scored, Aston Martin even able to get a point as well there, despite Lance Stroll failing to see the checkered flag. A bit gutted for a Yumu. I think he made a mistake right at the end of the race there, uh, which unfortunately meant he lost out to Logan Sargent and Carlos Sainz. What could have been for him today? Pole position, P19, come the checkered flag. That means if we take a look at the Drivers' Championship, Verstappen reopens up that gap to 79 points at the top of the table. We've got six weekends left, three of which being sprints, though, so it is all still to play for at the top of the table and I think for the first time we're now ahead of Oscar Piastri in the Drivers' Championship, at least for the first time uh, since very, very early on in the season there. The ones that actually scare me is Alpine. Both drivers able to consistently rack up points. I mean, so we're going to be under a lot of pressure from them come the end of the year as it's still just a Wasser 
desperately waiting now for him to score his first points of the campaign. They'll Red Bull open up their lead as well to 77 at the top of the table. I mean, even Mercedes could be a late threat in that battle. But yeah, we're going to have our work cut out if we want to try and stay ahead of Alpine by the end of the year. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure I leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we'll be back very soon when Formula 1 returns ready for the US Grand Prix at Texas.